Ever since Half-Life 2 and its episodes dropped, fans have been left waiting, 20 years and counting for more. Despite Valve releasing other games in the Half-Life universe, there's still no word on Half-Life 3. Unless, of course, you believe some of the 2024 rumors that have been going around. So if you're craving the next Half-Life fix but you're tired of replaying the classics, what should you do? Enter Transmissions Element 120, a single-player game you've probably never heard of. It's set in the Half-Life universe, but we don't know when, where, or why we're there. By the end, I was still unsure about a lot of things, but one thing's for certain. We're going to find out if it's worth your time. Let's dive in. This solo experience means that we don't have to worry about inviting our friends through complicated interfaces, although it is a Steam game, so that's generally not a worry in the first place. It's very quick to get into a new game. Just click New Game from the menu, and after a quick loading screen, you spawn into the first level. In terms of the game's objective, we need to go back to the beginning. The Half-Life series began 25 years ago in 1998, so if you've played other Half-Life games in the series, you pretty much know what you're doing here. Most of which is wandering around, collecting weapons, ammo, and power-ups to defeat enemies. Also, it's an FPS, which means all of the same things I've just mentioned still apply. The one difference I'd like to mention is that there is a much greater puzzle element to this game than with other Half-Life games, but I'll speak more to that in a bit. The gameplay experience is very short, which means it does lack some depth. You can probably get through the experience in anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour depending on your playstyle. Depending on your experience level, you might even be able to get through it quicker. So why does this game exist? Well, that's a good question. A quote from the game store page. Where are you? Why have you been sent? After playing through the game, I still don't have the answers. And to be fair, there are a couple of reasons for this. The first is that while I've played all of the games in the Half-Life series, that was some time ago. Some of the journals I found in the game reference things I understood, but I couldn't tie them to the original story. This is either intentional or I'm just forgetful and that's why it didn't make sense. The second reason is that on the Steam Store page, it doesn't really say why this game exists. Most mods or games that are short in nature explain how they are bridging a gap between two games or adding to the experience that they felt was left out of the main game. But this one just talks about how they added some new engine features and strays from telling you why you're playing it. Remember earlier when I said that there was a puzzle element to this game? Well, I struggled with a couple of the puzzles, but I'm going to set my own biases for puzzle games aside here and say that yes, this game was a lot of fun. There are a lot of people who are better at puzzle games than I am, and I think if that's your jam, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, puzzles aside, the remaining gameplay experience is very reminiscent of the Half-Life series, so if you enjoyed those games, you will definitely enjoy Transmissions. I already mentioned that this game is a short-lived experience. Most people who play can finish it in one sitting, and for that reason I don't think I would return to it. Um, you could go back and unlock the 11 achievements the game has to offer, but if you look at them ahead of time, you could probably complete them on your first playthrough. Unless of course the devs put some easter eggs in there that I missed, then maybe it's worth hopping back in. To be fair to the devs, it's likely that the short nature of this game was completely intentional, but again I don't know what the point was in this experience unless it was truly just to showcase the additional engine enhancements that they added. Even though this game isn't multiplayer, the number of people playing it does give us some clues as to how interested people are in this single player experience. At the time that I was writing the script for this video, the 30 day average was 2.6 players and the current player count was 1. Transmissions was released back in 2016 and so this isn't super surprising that there is a low player base. I know it sounds like I've been trashing on this game for the last minute or so, so let me change gears on you and talk about all the things that I enjoyed about it. This game looks really good. If you enjoyed how Half-Life 2 looked, you'll enjoy this even more with the enhanced dynamic lighting and post-processing. There is also some nostalgia to be had by playing transmissions, and it definitely hits you in the feels. Almost as if you were back in your desk in 2004 booting up Half-Life 2 for the first time. The fights weren't always easy, which made the experience a lot of fun. I don't want to spoil anything in that regard, so if this game seems interesting to you, you'll have to play it and find out for yourself. The gravity-defying gun they mentioned in the store page was a bunch of fun to play around with. Uh, there were some things that surprised me it didn't do, but um, other than that it was great. The last item on the list of things I liked was the QR code scattered about. You can scan them in-game, but I didn't realize that at first, so I held up my phone with the camera app open and scanned the QR code, uh, giving me the same message as when you scan it in-game. Uh, even though I'm pretty sure this exists elsewhere, this is one of the first time I've seen something like this, and it was pretty cool. I do have a couple more dislikes to cover, but they're pretty minimal. Uh, I play all my games in 1080p, and for some reason the game started with a resolution of 720p. Uh, this isn't a huge problem because it's an easy fix, you can just go into settings, change the resolution, and call it a day, but I felt like it was worth a mention. Also, I personally didn't like the difficulty of the puzzles here, but again, I'm not knocking the game for this, uh, I'm simply saying it again in case you're like me. Uh, a couple of the puzzles can be frustrating for those not expecting it, or those who are just bad at them. That said, after figuring them out, I feel like an idiot because they were much easier than I initially anticipated. 
Had Transmission's been a full-on game experience, I can confidently say that I would have stopped playing, but for others this might have been a reason to keep chugging along. So overall, what kind of score does Transmission's Element 120 receive? Well, it gets a point for how easy it is to join a friend, because, you know, it's a single player game. Uh, add another point for being able to get into a game quickly, as well as another for the objective being straightforward. Uh, no points for depth since it's a very short experience, but then we do give it another point because the overall experience is a lot of fun. We give it a point for both having some cool features and very few issues, making the overall experience a positive one, but sadly that's where the points end. Because there aren't a lot of people playing it, and because it doesn't offer a lot of replayability, I'm not seeing a reason to go back and play it again. Overall, this means that Transmissions Element 120 gets a score of 6 out of 10, giving it a rank of B tier. If you're planning to play Transmissions, I've added a link to the store page in the description. If you enjoyed the video or agree with the B tier rating, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button. And if you strongly disagree, or if you have an idea for a free-to-play game you'd like me to review, let me know down in the comments. Also, don't forget to click the video link on your screen, because the next game might be your new favorite.